Hello, good evening and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. Now, I did put a tweet out uh, a little bit earlier saying that there wasn't going to be a video slash podcast this evening because I have been at a funeral all day today, unfortunately. Um, I've not really had a great deal of time to, to look into the stories that are doing the rounds today, but... Scrolling through Twitter, scrolling through the news feeds as you do. I've got some opinions on some of the stuff that's been reported, so I, th- I thought I'd share those with you. Um, and the first story that I want to talk about is the links with Wilfred Zaha. Now, it's been reported that Wilfred Zaha prefers a move to Arsenal. But of course, we know that if Crystal Palace are going to sell him, they're going to want a substantial amount of money for him. Now, I've got no issues with Wilfred Zaha. I think he's a decent player. I think he's a good carrier of the ball. I think he's been a talisman for Crystal Palace over recent seasons. He's been very, very important to them. He wins penalties. He's a very tricky customer, causes defenders all sorts of problems. You know, he's a good footballer. There's no question about that. I don't think anybody could sit there and say that Wilfred Zaha is no good. He's certainly a lot better than some of the the wide men you know, that we've been forced to play with over the last couple of years, you know, the likes of, um, you know, somebody like Danny Welbeck, who is not a wide man, who was being forced to play there. He's more useful than Alex Iwobi uh, in terms of the outputs and what he gives to the team um, in terms of end product, etc., etc. So he's not a bad player. But we're also hearing that Crystal Palace would want around £80 million. Pounds, and that makes sense considering that they've just agreed a fee with Manchester United for Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who's a lot less proven. Yes, he's a different position, etc. But that's for 50 million. So, of course, they're going to demand something in the region of 70, 80 million for a player like Wilfred Zaha. And, you know, I, I perhaps Arsenal do have a little bit more money than the reports are suggesting. Perhaps there is more available than the 40, 50 million pounds that, you know, is being talked about. But to go and spend £80 million on Wilfred Zaha would be absolutely ludicrous when we have a squad that is in desperate need of an overhaul. To spend that sort of money on one player is crazy. Isn't that what Cristiano Ronaldo went to Juventus for? And we're talking about one of the greatest players of all time. I know he's you know, coming towards the end of his career, etc., etc., But he still had a huge impact there. He is Cristiano Ronaldo. And nobody's going to persuade me that Wilfred Zaha is worth that sort of money. It would be absolutely crazy to spend that sort of money on him. And I just wanted to make that point because, you know, it's not that I don't like the player. It's not that I don't think he would add something to Arsenal. Of course he would. But £80 million is mad. And if Arsenal do have £80 million to spend, then, mate, you need to go out there and you need to get a centre-half in. You know, there are far more pressing concerns within this squad. Um, And, you know, Arsenal's problem last season, yeah, we had a lack of width, etc. But for me, the concern was the defence. And you can't justify going and spending £80 million on Wilfred Zaha and then, you know, being cash-strapped when it comes to, you know, reinforcing the defence. So for me, that's an absolute no-go. And I'm not interested in, in Wilfred Zaha, particularly if that's the kind of money that Crystal Palace are looking for. Now, the other thing I want to touch on today is uh, something that went on yesterday. It was a little bit of a debate that went on on Twitter yesterday um, between the guys. uh, Is it Arsenal Chance that are, you know, setting up a little group in the clock end and they're really trying their best to enhance the atmosphere in that part of the stadium. And I take my hat off to them. They're a group of young guys, young Arsenal fans who are clearly not happy with the atmosphere. Uh, Just like us, there are lots of us in the North Bank that are not happy with the atmosphere either. And these guys are trying to do something about it. And, you know, they deserve credit for that. And they put a suggestion out there regarding a drum. And the amount of Arsenal fans that shot them down went after them in the comments saying a drum would be stupid, a drum would be this, a drum would do that. Uh, For me, it's a disgrace. I don't understand why you're going to criticise them for trying to make a better atmosphere, considering that it's the same people that complain about it every week that are now shooting these kids down for trying to do something about it. There are stadiums in Europe far more atmospheric than the Emirates that have drummers. You can't say a drum is stupid. A drum will be pointless if people don't get on board with it, don't sing in rhythm with it, etc., etc. Agreed. 
but maybe it will give people the kick up the ass to get more involved in the chanting. The new songs that they're putting out is a good thing because we've been recycling the same boring old chants for years and years and years. You know, and it's Arsenal. There's that one. And then we get a corner and it's Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. It's the same fucking thing week in, week out. And it's boring. It's bland. It's dead. 1-0 to the Arsenal. Bit of tradition there. But get with the times, man. Get with the fucking times. And I just want to see fans get behind these kids because they are trying to do something good. You may disagree with what they want to do. You may disagree with the drum. But they're trying to drum up interest in this little campaign that they've got going on, which is a good thing. And there are some people sitting there on their phones, keyboard warriors, having a go at them. And for me, it's just not on. You can't sit and moan about the atmosphere and then shoot these guys down for doing what they're trying to do. Arsenal Football Club is a football club. You go to the stadium to watch football. For me, an atmosphere enhances my enjoyment of the game. It's not a theatre. I don't go there to sit in my seat and have an interval and get my flipping ice cream, Ben and Jerry's, delivered to my seat, etc. And a half a glass, half a bottle, sorry, of white wine. That's not what I'm there for. I'm there to watch football. And part of the football experience is an atmosphere, is enjoying yourself, is being, you know, intimidating towards the opposition. That's what so many other teams have. You know, you've seen the Anfield factor, how important that's been to Liverpool in their Champions League runs. You see when people play at Dortmund, for example, how intimidating that can be. I put a tweet out of a picture of Balk in Greece who make it look like hell with the flares and everything. And I know that the rules here are different and we're not going to get away with what Balk do in Greece. But the point was that they've got drummers. But you're sitting there saying that drummers don't, create an atmosphere drummers don't help in an atmosphere and that proper crowds don't use drummers well there is proof in the pudding that lots of these top clubs with fantastic atmospheres across europe are well on board with drummers with flares with banners with better songs etc etc so i want to say a big shout out to the guys at arsenal chance um, that's the name of the twitter account I, I don't know them personally but what they're doing is a good thing and i encourage all arsenal supporters to get behind them that brings me to the end of this evening's short video. Apologies, it's later than normal. Like I said, I've been at a funeral all day. I wasn't going to put one out tonight, but then I started scrolling through Twitter, started reading various things, and I felt I wanted to have my say. Uh, let me know what you think on the topics discussed in the comments. As always, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, hit the little bell icon too, and that way you will never miss an upload. I'll be back tomorrow with a more in-depth Chronicles AFC Daily. Until then, take care.